Swoop is a language meant to make it easier to compare ideas across dimensions. And this is a pretty old project. You can see from this drawing where I was kind of considering the philosophical basis for the language when I was sketching this out was in November 10th of 2017. But I actually only got to the parser, like actually conceptualizing how I would make it in 2021. And I continued working on it for a little while. Let's look at the, yeah, this is the original repository. And I went into some detail about where it came from. It says, intent, I first meant for the language to aid communication between two people with inherently different perspective. And this was before I recognized, or I started this project before I realized that communication turns out to be more about style than language. But I continued working on the project, trying to get into something that could be more consistent person to person. And this gets into more of the language design side of things while it was a bit more structured. And there were specific things that happened in response to specific element configurations. So I'm not going to discard this basis because I still feel like it's conceptually interesting. The idea was that there would be scalar nodes, like an identifier, number, embedment, um, and then near scalars that kind of act like scalars but are composed of multiple different elements like phrases or strings and then containers that have been more consistent the idea was that there would be concept location essence and i'm missing one domain containers and then a whole bunch of different operators that you know I think these are pretty interesting concepts. I, I don't have anything wrong with this idea. Like, as a basis, I don't think this was a very bad start. But just looking at the code. So looking at the names that I exported for the rules and tokens for different components. Because this is specific to Monaco, which is Microsoft's syntax highlighter, I don't necessarily mind them being in this specific location. But as I was going through these projects, adding different constructs, and then recognizing that they were relating different ways, because here I have in the constructs folder, towards the construction of the AST, these are the abstract representations of each of the different constructs that I acknowledged. So this is the most abstract version of the identifier node, according to the way that I had it coded. And then I would import that in the parser generator, grammar, AST, nodes, same thing, atoms, scalars. There was such heavy nesting. There'd be a rule which would generate the parser generator rule. And then there'd be a reference where other rules could reference this item. And it just, got very complicated. I made this library Splashy Language, which was a wrapper for PEG.js, which is now PEGI.js, I think. But after a while of using it, I just really didn't like that I needed to generate a specific version of the parser and then do something kind of hacky to enforce that. So this is generated by PEG.js. It's a really long file that I have to generate every time that I wanted to change one of the constructs. And I figured there was a better way to do this. So I ended up switching directions and made another repository, Swoop Parser. This is just a screenshot of what the visualizer for the abstract syntax tree would look like. because I made something to step through the actual parsing to make it easier to see what I was doing. So I hand rolled this one instead of using a parser generator because trying to navigate the actual meaning behind the constructs here became very abstract because I wanted to make sure it was usable by the parser generator. In this case with swoop parser, let's go into it. The core is a lot more straightforward in that the concept of a cursor takes precedent. There's an offset start input and then a variety of generators that you can use. And then for the actual parser, 
every construct has its own generator. Let's see, nominal. So these are identifiers. And they yield different log messages. They construct different elements of the node, like the key or the head. And it's a lot more uniform. The container nodes also have their own generator. It generates a container. And I feel like this is just a little bit easier for me to step through personally because I know how the elements relate to each other. And I feel like that's the main thing. With PEG.js, or what's now PEGI, it wasn't bad. It was just a lot to keep track of because I had to generate that file, compile it to TypeScript, and then use it. And as I was using it, it was just fundamentally different than the ways the constructs existed. But here, I have my own runtime-ish that incorporates elements from the actual parser. So the core has a cursor, and we step through that cursor using this SVG. The code isn't necessarily the clearest, but you can see that there are different controls. Let's see, play, forward. And I don't necessarily think that this is bad. Um, the point of this particular structure was to use MJS, then convert it to TypeScript, and then actually bring that into something a bit more cohesive as I talk about why I'm making some of the decisions that I'm making. The cool thing about where this project is now is that I can use it. Let's see, I have some tests in the parser directory, I think. Yeah, these are just testing to see if the constructs work the ways that I expected them to. The idea is that as I do this, I can add a debugger statement and then look into how the parse trees actually work. And then you saw that visualization earlier. So this is an example of the visualization structure. If I just type something simple like me at that thing and then parse it, and play through that parsing, you can see that it generates different identities. Open brace, me at that thing. Then it recognizes that that thing is a phrase. Then it also recognizes that me at that thing is an infix expression. And then it also recognizes that cl closing curly brace. Then the container. Then it provides each of those uh, identities in order as well, uh, based on the tokens that are generated. All of the tokens have a kind. So this kind is composite. It is an operator. The open brace is an operator, a delimiter, and a structural open. And it's composed of just this identity, this key. The nominal, uh, this nominal token, me, represents a key of me as well. And getting into something a bit more complex. Phrases have a head, a body, and a tail. In this case, the head is that and the tail is thing. The idea behind this is that you could just concatenate these and separate them by a space, and then you would have a relatively versatile, what's the word, serializer for this language. Because the other elements, me at that thing, me is the head of this. The tail is phrasal. And the kind is what lets us know what kind of operator joins the head and the tail. So since this is a pragmatic perspective node, we know that we're supposed to join these with the at operator. The idea behind this specific phrase is when you're looking at something, me at that thing represents the opinion that someone might have about that thing. And these also combine to make a container it's composed of the opening delimiter and closes with the tail being the closing delimiter. In another video, I'm going to talk about how I've used this. There is a language seed that I use with ChatGPT describing a language called Unified AI Language. So stay tuned.